Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So this video is just going to show you how to reconstruct an image using layers in Photoshop. So a customer has come to me with these fridges. Uh, these contain a keg of beer. Uh, there's a tap on the top for pulling your pint. Um, the fridges, in reality, are a little bit plain and they look like this. So they have a silver front and black back, black sides. So we're going to put a logo on the side and we're going to wrap the front, okay? So customer wants them to look like this. Coors one. Guinness. Um, and then we've got a Carlsberg one as well. But I'm going to work on the Coors one, okay? Because this image is really hard to find. Um, these images are quite tall, so it's 30 inches high. Um, and like I said, I cannot find an image that is is good enough to print. So I'm going to have to make this piece by piece. So here I've got the logo on the side, which is going to be printed and contour cut. That's going to be fine. That'll also have a protective lamination on top. On the front, this will be printed and laminated as well. But to actually make the image, I'm going to have to get the background, the Coors Light logo, and then the Coors Light um, point. So it has to be made in three layers. There's no other way of me doing this image. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you now how to do that. So open up a new window on Google. Google is the search engine that I'm using here. So I'm gonna search for Core Core's Mountain, okay? So that's the background image. I click into images. Now I'm gonna need a really high resolution image. So I need to go into settings and do an advanced search. Settings, advanced search. And in here, right, you can change all the words and the keywords that you want here to search for. All I'm looking for, <coughs> all I'm looking for is the Coors Mountain. My main thing here is the size, though. I need the size to be large. So I click beside image size and I go down to larger than 2 megapixels. It needs to be more than 2,000 pixels wide. This is quite a large image. So, um, you know, the higher you go, the less images you're going to actually find. Okay, so... I search it down here. Okay, right, so here's an image. This looks really good because I need the mountain peaks to be at the top so I can put the, the logo here and the point down at the bottom. So this is the image that I'm going to use, okay? So I'm going to save that image on the desk in my folder. So I saved that in my folder there. Now what I need to do, if I go back to the image, I need to get the Coors Light logo. So the Coors Light logo as an EPS vector. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search on brands of the world. So brandsoftheworld.com have all the Coca-Cola, Heineken. Here you can see Pfizer logo on the top. It's probably the most downloaded font at the minute. Or sorry, most downloaded logo at the minute. So I'm going to type in here and I'm going to look for Coors. Search for the Coors logo. Uh, which one do I want? Okay, so I see this one here and this one here. That's the one that I want. It's most like the image uh, the customer is asking for. Okay, right, so you agree to all your downloading uh, conditions and then download. When you go in here, you'll see that it's a vector format EPS. So I know that that's exactly what I want. So I open the downloaded image. Here I am. So the Coors Light logo is here, right? Um, all vectorized. So if you go to wireframe, you'll see that your logo is vectorized. Sometimes, guys, uh, people can do a live trace in Illustrator or some live tracing uh, program and the text ends up being really shabby and the edges are terrible. So live tracing is good if, if you have a really high resolution image. So always check your logos on brands of the world that they're actually good quality ones. As you can see here, quality of this is absolutely perfect. So it's probably the original Coors logo. So I'm literally going to copy and paste this into Photoshop, okay? So, so I'm in Photoshop now. Um, what I need to do is open the background image. So I open... This is my background image, okay? So there's all these kind of uh, guidelines on it. So it was obviously used in one form or another on Photoshop before. So I need to go in to Clear Guides View. Go down to Clear Guides. Gets rid of all of that. In Adobe Illustrator now, I need to copy and paste this logo in on top of that file. So I literally just hit Control and C. Jump back into Photoshop, Control and V, and I'm going to paste it in as pixels. Okay. Nothing 
too fancy here guys just get the logo in there we're gonna get this flattened and get it printed okay so there is the logo right in the middle of the mountain peak okay hit enter so when you zoom in you can see it's changed to pixels okay the quality of this is quite good in reality it's probably going to be printed at about that size okay so now i need to get the point glass and it needs to be high quality point glass as well so what i need to do is do another search for a cores point cores cores draft i'm going to hit cores draft okay images and again settings advanced search i'm looking for maybe about a thousand megapixels here so sorry one megapixel so anything over 1000 pixels should be good enough for this okay so larger than larger than 1024 pixels and above okay so here is this looks this looks really nice this one here doesn't have the word light on it uh, but still it should work I can drop the Coors Light logo on top there and it'll, it'll look fine anyway. Oh, here's another one. I'll save that one into my folder. And then in Photoshop, guys, you can search for images that have transparent backgrounds, okay? That's fine. Uh, but a lot of them, like I said, with the live trace and Illustrator, they can be done really quickly by a program and not done by a person. So programs, they overcompensate or undercompensate sometimes. So you end up having jaggly lines on the edges, um, areas of white around the text that you don't want. And when you drop it in on your layer, you can see it coming out. So I like to do that myself. So that's why I always find my own images and do this, because you know the quality is going to be good. So I'm going to go in here and open that point okay so the quality of that is really poor they didn't want me to get that drink uh, that image they obviously had some kind of copyright on it so i have another one here let me see do, 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 do. here we go okay so this image is quite good so this is the one that i'm going to get okay so guys the simplest thing to do is literally type around this um using my lasso tool so over in photoshop on my lasso tool okay i'm going to select my it's called a polygonal lasso tool okay so this is the one that works with lines check up the top that you don't have a feathered okay i don't want any feather on the edges so i don't want it soft i want it really crisp so i literally zoom in guys and like i said this there is faster ways of doing this you can use the magnetic lasso tool but like i said it overcompensates and undercompensates sometimes and, and it misses uh, it misses areas of the image so at least if you do it by hand yourself you know you can go inside the lines so you don't have any funny shading so I'm going to blast across this now Okay, guys, so I have selected the, the whole point all the way around, okay? Um, so now what you want to do is you want to extract this from the background because we don't want the background, okay? So what I literally do is control C. You can convert this to outlines like a, like a vector, so it actually clips the image, okay? But I don't like doing the clips. So control C, control V. So as you can see in my layer palette over here, I have a new layer on the top, which just is just the point glass, okay? Without the background. Okay, um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Guys, this job is going to be nice and quick, so I'm not doing any kind of feathering around the edge or any fancy business, okay? All I want is that point, literally just that, okay? But as you can see, I don't have the word light here, so I need to put the word light in there. So I'm going to go back here into this image, use my polygonal lasso tool again. Literally just go across the word light here. Again, nothing funny. No uh, really fancy tips or tricks. So control C again in here. Back into the other one. Control V. Okay. Edit. Edit. Transform. Scale. Okay. And then I'm going to just bring that word light down there. And hit enter. Check and see the scale of it is okay. 
That looks good. Okay, guys. Now it's probably a little bit, a little bit strong there. So uh, in color. So I'm literally going to reduce the opacity of it just so that the, the um, you can see the little bubbles of water here, just so that they come through. So over here in my layer tool, my opacity, I'm going to bring that down just a little bit. As you can see there, the word light is not so vibrant now, and it looks a bit more realistic. Okay, so I get rid of my background image then. My Photoshop layer here, I'm happy with that. Okay, so I'm going to merge these layers. Probably never going to have to do this again, so it's going to merge visible layers. And then so the file is not so large, I'm going to actually bring in my the size of my image, all of this blank space takes up memory, okay? So I bring that all in just by literally hitting the crop tool over here. So this will crop your background in, okay? Crop. Now I file, save as, save it as a cores, draft glass one, Photoshop file, save. Okay, now again, I'm gonna select all, control C, copy this, and I'm gonna paste it into the other file. Okay, so this is the one that we created. Our layers are over here. We started with the background, which was the mountains, and then we dropped our logo on top. Really, really simple. And now I'm gonna press Control V and drop in the, the point of glass, which is this here. Okay, so now I just scale that down a little bit. Apply the size on that. I'm gonna zoom in just so you can see a little bit better here. Okay, guys. So what I'm gonna have to do is bring the, the logo up a little bit higher. And make it a little bit smaller so that the point glass is a little bit more visible. So I go edit, transform, scale. I could be doing this in Adobe Illustrator, guys, and I can have the image in the background and have all of the text, um, the Coors Light logo as a, as a vectorized artwork. I do that generally, but I just want to show you this video um, in Photoshop. Might help you. So there we go, just centralize the, the Coors Light bottle um, point. Logo is above. Looks really good. I think that's nice. Only thing I would say is the point is a little bit lost, okay? Because there's no shadow on uh, below it here. So, uh, but but I think it still looks, still looks pretty good. The original is this image here. Point with Coors Light. All right, the logo and background. So now we have it in Photoshop, in layers. Point, logo, background. Okay, so guys, sometimes when you when you have to uh, redraw artwork um, and you want the quality to be good, it's the only way to do it, is to literally draw it yourself from scratch. Okay, so I so hope you enjoyed that tutorial. It's very, very simple. Um, I'm going to flatten all this image now, and I'm going to... Um, I'm going to print it. So I hope you liked it, guys. Um, if you liked the video, click like, subscribe, and share the video if you want. And um, yeah, if you look, tune in again. And if I have any other videos that I think that you might find interesting, I'll record those as well. Cheers, guys. Yeah.